Hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks for clicking on the video. This is David Pendleton, and now we're going to cover the rookie opening round front nine holes for the St. Patrick's Day tournament. So uh, if you're not a subscriber, please become one. You know, that would be awesome. And if you like the video, please take a moment there to hit the thumbs up button to give it a like. That would be much appreciated. Okay, so in this walkthrough here, I'm going to show you quite a bit of shots that can get you to a minus 14. But as you know, I left some shots right at pin especially like on a hole number eight that you're going to be able to drop based off my very, very narrow misses. So you should be able to pick up a better score than what I had here. All right, so let's go ahead and hop right into a hole number one. So hole number one, we're going to be playing this one 10% at max distance of our club. Same setup as the qualifying round. We're going to put the yellow ring right there on the corner of the fairway up against the rough. I'm gonna go five top with one right, or I'm sorry, with one left. Of course, if you're using an extra mile six or seven, you're gonna go four and a half top with one left. It's gonna be okay uh, either way you're playing here. It's gonna be a nice, easy shot to get us onto the fairway. Plenty of fairway to work with. And now we're gonna be looking at shot number two. So shot number two, I did pick up today. And we're going to be playing this one. Oops, I'm going to go back here. We're going to be playing this one minus 20%. I am not sure why the graphic's not there, but minus 20% at mid-distance. So minus 20%, remember that. At mid-distance of our club. As you can see there, we're dead center for the eagle. Now, I know minus 20% is weird, the shot is not uphill, but we're tricking our elevation as if the shot is uphill. And that is going to put us dead center for the eagle on hole number one. Now we talk about hole number two. Hole number two, I'm not even close. You know, I'm not a fan of this hole at all. We're going to be playing this one 20% elevation. We're going to be playing it at mid distance of our club. We're gonna go with the backbone and the navigator combo. Again, uh, this isn't the this is not the easiest hole to pick up a hole in one on at all. This is a very difficult one in my opinion. But you can see here we're missing this one by about one and a half green squares to the right. But that's okay. Let's go ahead and talk about hole number three. Hole number three, we're gonna play zero percent at max. Now I had a lot of people wanting me to go over the rough. And I'm going to show you how to go over the rough, but I want you to watch this shot. And I want you to keep in mind that I have an extra mile eight. That's a lot more juice than a lot of rookie players have. And I'm using a Titan ball so that we keep this amount of uh, tailwind, right? As you can see here, I'm going with almost full overpower. And I even hit a perfect ball. That means I'm going to get the max distance on my drive here. I mean, everything was perfect. And I want you to notice that I barely roll out of the rough, okay? So people with like an extra mile, six or seven, you're probably not going to be able to duplicate that shot unless you want to spend a power four or a power five ball. But I had a lot of people ask me to go over the rough. So I went over the rough there for you. Now, two things. If you're not going over the rough, um, just play it the exact same way that we did in the qualifying round. And if you forgot how that is, go back to my qualifying round video and you'll see us lay up and then take a big dog. That is a very, very safe way to pick up the eagle. If you're able to go over the rough, you do get yourself a chance to pick up an albatross with the rough bump. The only thing I want you to notice here is notice how bad this, this glitch is on the green, okay? And the reason that I point that out is because on both of my accounts, I set this shot up the exact same way. This is how this shot played. I even hit a great ball to the right here. But the rough bump pre plays pretty nicely. It comes in at good speed. On my other account, I hit a perfect ball and I did experience the glitch on the green and I went flying into the sand, even with hitting the rough. So you're gonna have to be very cautious of that. If you wanna play it safe, you can go over the rough if you want to, but I would use the bounce over shot from fairway to green. The rough bump is very inconsistent and it cost me one shot on one of my accounts, all right? 
So now we're going to go into hole number four. Hole number four, we're playing 10% at mid distance. We're going to use our backbone with the navigator. One and a half top, one left. You're going to notice my setup point here is orange ring on the rough. And look at the end of my ball guideline. Notice how the very end of my ball guideline is on that dark green square. And it's sort of favoring the right hand side of the dark green square. We're going to pull this one again at mid distance of our club. Perfect ball. And we just barely miss this one to the right hand side. So what should we do? What I would suggest that we do is the exact same spin because we know that the speed came in very nicely to pin, right? And again, let's look at the setup point. Notice how I'm favoring the right-hand side of that dark green square. I would really just split that dark green square in half with my ball guideline. So I'd move my ball guideline a little bit over to the left-hand side and try to put it exactly dead center of that dark green square and then see if you can get that one to drop for a hole in one. That's gonna be really, really close. Um, and for you that have multiple rookie accounts, you're going to be able to dial that one in based off my miss there. Very close. Okay, that's going to bring us into hole number five. Hole number five, uh, as you can see here, this is my first attempt at this hole. I wasn't sure how I was going to play it. But um, we are going to use a berserker here, okay? And if you want to, you can play it just like that right there, okay? You would add your top spin and you would add your right side spin. That is the shot that I played in the qualifying round. So again, kind of a similar wind angle, a little bit of tailwind here, um, but different direction. We can do top spin and right side spin and play the exact same shot that I did in qualifying. If you wanna know what that looks like, then go ahead and flip over there and then come back to this. Um, however, if you want to gamble and try to get on the green, I will show you how to do so. But I'm gonna have to teach you something about the game that some people don't know. Uh, I've explained this before, I've explained it on a couple of my holes on my Tory 8 walkthrough. All right, so notice here that when I apply my top spin and my left side spin, that my ball guide line is clipping the rough and rolling out onto the fairway. That is not what I want. It's fine if it happens, but I wanna go for green, okay? This is the best wind angle to go for it. Tailwind with wind from right to left. Now, I want you to notice right here, when I push up to max, Just bear with me, because if you can understand how to do this, you're going to become a better player. Maybe some people know how to do this already. Okay. When I push up to max, I want you to notice this thing right here. You see like this shadow line? It's up here, and it's down here. There's a shadow there that happens on the course whenever you push your club to max. So right here is the middle right of the target where my target zone is the yellow ring is one ring and then right underneath that i'm like 1.2 rings into overpower and if i do that then as long as i hit a perfect ball my ball should bounce here it should bounce here on that fairway and then what we'd be looking to is roll onto the rough through the green okay or roll through the rough onto the green like that is what i'm visualizing when i take this shot so here's what I'm gonna do to make that accurate. So just, just again, just bear with me here. All right, I'm gonna pull my 10% like I normally should. And then instead of using overpower on my drive, I'm gonna push my target back up one ring. I really should have pushed it back up 1.2, but um, you know, I noticed that now after I look at the replay that I should have pushed it back up 0.2 more, but I still hit a perfect ball. We get the bounce here, we get the bounce there, and we roll through exactly what we're wanting to do. Again, if I had to push up just a little bit more and been 100% accurate, um, the ball would have came in a little bit better. But either way, we're going to take that and pick up a very easy eagle there once we execute that shot. Okay, that brings us into hole number six. Hole number six is tough when it comes to um, both shots because I do believe that we got back-to-back. I do believe we've got back-to-back -back tailwind here. So we're going to be using uh, Kingmaker to reduce the wind. We're going to pull this one. And you notice here, I didn't use any overpower. 
you know, you can use overpower if you want, but we have got to make sure we get through that thin, that thin strip of fairway. We can't hit the rough on this hole. All right, now I tried to figure this shot out based off my other account. I'm not gonna go for the rough bump. So, I want you to notice what I'm doing with my ball guideline here. I'm using full left side spin with a little bit more than five bars of backspin. Take a look at my setup point. Notice how my ball guideline is to the right of the pin and then the end of my ball guideline there. So just kind of notice how I'm set up here. Right of pin and ball guideline past the pin. I'm pulling this one one for one. So 3.7 wind is 3.7 rings. Unfortunately, I hit a great ball to the right. But I'm showing it to you because I want you to see how, how close we could get to getting this ball to drop. We're just gonna use the way the green slopes to try to push our ball towards the pin. I just need you, we just need to use a little bit less backspin, okay? All right. Now that's gonna take us here to hole number seven. And hole number seven, I don't have the graphics up because we're gonna talk about it. Um, oops, hold on. We're gonna talk about the elevation on hole number seven. So first we're going to talk about the spin. Half a bar of backspin. So now let's take a look at the ball guideline. See where we're aiming here? Now the shot you're going to see me play, I'm playing with a power one ball. I'm using a backbone. Backbone 10. I'm playing at 20%, 2.2 wind. All right. You're going to see me pull this like 1.9 rings. I'm playing this at mid distance of my club. 20% at mid. And we miss to the right hand side. So this is why I want to go over this because this is going to be a little weird. We could have pulled it 25% at max and pulled it 0 0.3, 0 0.4 more rings. And I think we would have been close there to a hole in one. So I would probably play this one 25% at max distance of my club. But if you want to play at mid distance of your club, then we probably have to go all the way up to 45%. You see how that's the same number? So 25% at max is 2.3, or 45% at mid is 2.3. I would go ahead and just keep it easy and try to play at 25% at max and see if you can get that one to come closer to the hole in one. But I just wanted to go through that one with you and um, just kind of let you see how I come up with shots. That's going to take us on to hole number eight. This one's frustrating because I left both my shots at pin, um, which is pretty hard to believe considering uh, I had a chance you know, to dial it in and make it better. But anyways, we're gonna go with a katana here, full top to right. Perfect ball. This is, this is gonna come in really nice on the fairway, you know, so it's gonna leave us for a good thorn shot for shot number two. And again, you know, we played this one 10% at max. Now, we're gonna play this one 10% at mid. I'm gonna use quite a bit of backspin, as you can see here. Three, a little bit more than three and a half bars of back. And very important that when we do that with the thorn, we put that ball guideline bouncing into the hole. Again, 10% at mid on this shot here. So I left it right on the pin. Now, what I did on my other account is I played the same 10% at mid, but I went ahead and offset to the left-hand side just a tad, and I rolled the cup on the right-hand side. I couldn't believe it. So I want you to do the same thing. I want you to just go ahead and play this one in the middle of the left-hand side of the cup. So to the left-hand side of the pin, middle of the left-hand side of the cup, and that's going to be a really good drop on hole number eight. Okay, hole number nine, I've had people ask me to show two different approaches. I will show two different approaches today. 
and then I'll see how I want to go about it in the final round. First approach is definitely risky. Um, I'm going to go with full top here, one bar of right side spin with the Titan. We're going to go ahead and pull this one here. And we're going to go with a lot of overpower. Again, I can understand if you don't want to take this shot. This is a risky shot, so I'll show you another way to approach this hole. Uh, I do think we're going to see quite a bit of opponents pick up a birdie on this par 5. But you can see here that I almost rolled into the rough on the backhand part. So the shot is definitely a good shot. And we pull that one 10% uh, at max. Now we go into shot number 2. So shot number 2 is going to be headwind. Here's what I suggest you do. I suggest you don't bring your sniper. I suggest that you bring your big dog if you're going to go over the rocks. So if you're going to go over the rocks, bring your big dog, and then you can play this same type of shot, right, that I'm going to be playing here. I don't really pull any elevation because I'm just going to pick a spot here and use a lot of left curl to get myself onto the green, as you can see. So overpower with left curl. There's really no issues. We get ourselves in there for an easy putt. Now... This is going to be the safest way to play hole number nine, but it's also going to be tougher, okay, to pick up that eagle that we're looking for. We're going to go ahead and use our quarterback, and we're going to just play this one, no elevation at max, full right side spin with four bars of backspin. Almost half a ball of curl to the right, but not quite. You can see we come in really nicely onto the fairway. Now, the thing about this is, is I would use your horizon if you're going to be playing this. And I know I have a horizon five. I know that's like super, like super stellar for a rookie, but it's not going to matter. Your horizon at any level is going to have a ton of top spin. Um, or again, you could just use a big dog and take, you know, a shot here and just try to get as far up the second fairway as possible. But we are going to be using a bounce over shot with our horizon and full top spin. Using a little bit of overpower. This is a pretty nasty great right, but it's really not a big deal as we have plenty of fairway to work with. And what we really want to do is catch that slope and roll down, which obviously we didn't do. So now I have to save this hole with an inbringer, which is no problem. A very easy wind here. I was going to go for the max top spin shot. It didn't look good. Now I'm just going to use the back spin into the hole. I pull this one no elevation at mid distance. Hit perfect. That ball is going into the hole dead center very easily. Okay, that's the front nine wind angles, and I will start working on the back nine. Best of luck, everybody.